So today we're going to talk about Schur numbers, um, but as an added bonus, these numbers lead to the biggest mathematical proof ever. Uh, the record was set in 2017 and still hasn't been beaten. We're going to start with the numbers from 1 up to n. Our challenge is to colour these numbers in a way that there is no a, b and c of the same colour with a plus b equals c. So two of these can be the same colour, as long as not all three are the same colour. So an example, well, there are two things we kind of need to fix, really. We need to fix n, and we need to fix the number of colours. So let's say we have two colours and one to four. So how can we do one to four in two colours? So one, doesn't matter what colour it is, so I'm going to make one pink. Now two has to be a different colour, because these a, b and c don't have to be distinct. And if two were pink, one plus one equals two. So we'd have failed at this condition. So two has to be a different color to one. So we'll put two in green. At this stage, three could be any color because one plus two equals three. One and two are different colors anyway. They're not all going to be the same color. But you've said two colors, haven't you? Yes. So it can be any color of pink and green. We'll pause on three. What about four? Well, four can't be green because otherwise two plus two equals four would all be green. Four has to be pink. Oh, but now this tells us about three. Three is going to have to be green, because otherwise one plus three equals four would all be pink. So three is green. So we have coloured in the numbers from one to four in two colours in a way that we don't have any A plus B equals C of the same colour. It was possible. It was possible to do one to four with two colours. Exactly. Well done. Thank you. What if I asked you to put in number five? We can't do this. Because this is the only way of doing one to four. We could swap green and pink. Apart from relabeling, this is the only way we could do the numbers one to four. Yeah. So what colour can five be? It can't be pink because one plus four equals five would then all be pink. Mm. But it can't be green either because then two plus three equals five would all be green. Oh. So we can't do five. If n equals five, we can't do two colours. And we actually write this as s for sure. This is the sure number. Yeah. S2 equals 5. 5 is the first n for which we can't colour 1 up to n in two colours, avoiding this a plus b equals c of the same colour. So the failure point for two colours was 5. Exactly. That's the sure number for two colours. Exactly. Okay. Um, now, for completeness sake, the sure number for one colour, the failure point is actually going to be 2, because we can have 1 number in one colour is fine. As soon as we add that second number, we then have one plus one equals two in one colour. So that's the failure point here. Yep. Um, failure point for three, we're not going to work it out because it will take quite a while. Mm. Um, but for three, it ends up being 14. I could do 13 numbers with yeah. three colours. And actually, that's a challenge. If you want to try it, um, you can do 13 numbers with three colours, avoiding this condition. You know I'm going to put that on the screen. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I would actually be intrigued. One thing I don't know is how many ways you can do it. Ooh. So mm. see collectively how many we can, we can find. Okay, okay. Um, okay. So, it's getting, so it's, they're getting up a bit already. They're yeah. getting up a bit. This uh -huh. is already double plus a bit. The fourth show number, four colours. 45 is the failing point. So I could have done 44. Could have done 44, can't do 45. What about five colours? I'm going to find out later. Um, okay. <laughs> this is where we're going to get to. So there is already one thing that I have assumed that we can't quite be so loose about. And it's whether these show numbers exist. What if, say, for 10 colours, you can always do it? Is there always going to be that breaking point? And we want to prove first that they exist. Before we put time and effort into finding them, we need to be confident that this limit does exist somewhere. So. I'm going to show you a proof of why it definitely exists. This isn't the world's longest proof. Hopefully. This isn't the world's longest proof. This is the proof that we need to do in order to be confident that the world's longest proof will like, eventually get somewhere. The world's longest proof, spoilers, is what this fifth um, S5 is. And I'm not reproducing the world's longest proof to say that. I don't think YouTube has actually the capacity for that size of video. I want to show you why these share numbers exist. I want to cast your mind back to an old video about friends and strangers. And in that video, Simon Pampina showed that with a group of 
six people, there must be a group of three, all of whom either are friends or are strangers. Now, another way of looking at that, if we have six dots representing the people, and we draw in lines between all the people in two colors, one color representing friends, one color representing strangers, then we must always have a triangle of one color. Pink means strangers, green means friends, and it's impossible to draw in these lines without there being what we call a monochromatic triangle. So a triangle of one color. So in here, we have this monochromatic triangle oh, there. Yeah. Oh, there's one here as well, oh, I see. Yeah. Yep, there's a pink one there. But there always has to be one. There always has to be at least one. This says that if we have six dots um, and two colors, then there must always be one monochromatic triangle. Yeah, and that's proven. And know, that's proven. See elsewhere for... See elsewhere. There'll be a link somewhere. We can actually extend this using similar arguments um, to show that with, again, K colors, there is always going to be a number of dots uh, which give a monochromatic triangle. In this case, when K is two for two colors, the number of dots is six. Um, if we had K is one for one color, once we have three dots, there's always going to be a monochromatic triangle. This can be proven. It will be a slight side step that will be just expanding what Simon showed. He showed a specific case. You can show it for the general case. So you just got to trust me that this number exists. And we are going to use this fact. So back in the show world. Okay. And we've got one to N and we've got K colors. And I'm going to say this N is going to be this value above. So this N is the number of dots we need to ensure a monochromatic triangle when we have K colors. That's something you're just proposing or? I'm proposing this. Okay. And now I'm going to show you that if N is this size, then we always have this A plus B equals C triple, no matter what coloring we use. So this gives us an upper bound for our show number, if I'm right. Yes, right. Who knows at this point? Okay. Um, right. We may have a gut feeling, but if I'm right, this shows an upper bound for the show numbers. Um, and if they've got an upper bound, they must exist. We've got our N being this value, this uh, number that guarantees a monochromatic triangle from up here. Yep. And now we're going to color in all the one to N in any way. So I'm going to show you that in any way we do this, there is going to be an A plus B equals C to N this size. And I'm going to do this by taking a slight, slight side step and drawing a graph. And we're going to draw a graph this time, not with six dots, but these dots are ellipses, because uh, there's going to be many dots. There's actually going to be this R, K to the three dots. And these are going to be numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on until this one, which is R, K to the three. Right, and we're going to draw in all the lines, and we're going to draw the lines different colors based on their difference. So in this case, suppose in our coloring, one was green, then anything that differs by one is going to be colored in green. Two, we'll say was pink. Anything that differs by two is going to be colored in pink, and so on. Yeah. And we're going to keep going. Maybe three is again green, in which case two and five will be green, and so on. Okay. So we're coloring these lines based on what the difference maps to in our original coloring. And this original coloring was just randomly. Any coloring. Randomly. This chosen. will work for any coloring. Okay. Right. So what do we know about this magical RK3? Yeah. We know there's got to be a monochromatic triangle in here. Yeah. So there's got to be somewhere in here some i, j, and k. And actually, let's just make k the biggest and i the smallest that are joined by a monochromatic triangle. Somewhere in there, yeah. Yes. So what does that mean? Well, that means that k minus j, which is the color we've used um, for their difference, yeah. that is going to be the same color as then j minus i, which is going to be the same color as k minus i. Because it's in a monochromatic triangle, the lines are colored based on what we have in our original coloring. So in this original, these three have to be the same color. And now k minus j plus j minus i equals k minus i. So here are three that are the same color and that add. These are our a, b, and c. Yeah. So we found an a, b, and c in our list of numbers that adds to each other and they're the same color. That's bad. That's bad. But what this means is, whatever the coloring, we have found our bad set. We have found the set. So we know that our failure point is at most RK3. 
It could be less. We haven't proven we can do it up to there, but we have proven that at the very most, it fails at this point. Oh, I said it's bad, but it's not bad, it's good, because we wanted a failure. <laughs> we want failure. Yeah, okay. So if you, if you want to fail, this is good. Okay. So we found that these Schur numbers must exist. But that was presuming that, th that you said that this equals that, but do we know that that has to be the case? Um, so what the Schur numbers is looking for is a point of failure. And what we've said is that if n is at this point, it definitely fails. So we found a point of failure. Now, the show numbers look for the lowest point of failure. Um, so it might be underneath, but it's definitely going to be somewhere here. I did assume this, but that's just to find, I've shown we have a point of failure, which means there must be a least point of failure. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. Okay, so, so, the, so no matter, so coming back to our show numbers, no matter how many colors, yep. there's always going to be an N. There's always going to be an M. That breaks it. That breaks it. Yep. Um, which brings us along to the fifth Schur number. Yeah. Well, judging by this, it, it shouldn't be cra a crazy jump. That jumped by three. That jumped by nine. And what, that jumped by 31. Right. If you look at it, it looks like it's just roughly times three. Roughly. Schur number five is actually the largest Schur number we've been able to find. Now, the reason for this is... If you try and prove that the show number of three is 14, you'll see it's a lot of work. Here, luckily, there was only one combination we needed to think of. But the greater n is, the more different combinations of the colouring you've got to think of. For example, here, if n is 14 and we've got three colours, there are three to the 14 different colourings that there could be. And OK, you can count some of them the same because one red, two blue is kind of equivalent to one blue, two red, but that's an exponential number that you need to check. So although these numbers are quite small... They were hard to get. Yeah. And the proof of what S5 equals is the biggest mathematical proof to find because we've had to check everything. Um, some people won't count it as mathematical proof because most of the data is checking. So it was brute force. So it was brute force. Yeah. Um, but for the sake of having an excellent headline, I do like the idea of this being the biggest mathematical proof. Was it done with one of these supercomputers, was it? And... Yeah, it was done with something called a SAT solver, which checks satisfiability, is what the SAT is short for. What's the number? I'm dying the to number. know. Yeah. So the number, after two petabytes of data, so you've got gigabyte, terabyte, then petabyte is the next one, the first point of failure is 161. So even though it was one of the biggest proof ever, the number wasn't that big. The number's not that big. And this is the largest thing, the largest show number we've found so far. So they've been using brute force, right? They've they been using brute they force. They use brute force to get 161. Yep. You can do 160 numbers with five colours. You can't do 161. Right. That's all well and good. They haven't got S6 yet, so I'm no. presuming that's just because it's just too, so much work. So much work. Couldn't they find another way to prove it that doesn't involve brute force? Couldn't there be another algorithm or method lurking out there for us? Right. Maybe. We haven't found one yet. Um, it is something to think of. I mean, the good thing is we do have this upper bound. So we've got at least a cap of where we need to check. Using the using this. Using, using this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, don't forget, to find the first point of failure, you need to find a point of failure. And then you need to show that everything below it doesn't fail. So it's not just checking one thing. You still kind of have to look at everything else anyway. So there's a kind of proof called constructive proofs, where the proof doesn't just tell you a number exists, it tells you how to find that specific number. We've not got one for this yet. Um, if anyone has an idea, please do let me know. I'd be very interested to hear. Um, Careful what you ask for. <laughs> but given this was uh, found in 2017 by a man called Marain Hoyler, and because it hasn't been beaten in what's now eight years, you've got to think it's going to have to be something complicated if it's taken eight years of people working to not achieve something better. Have they not put a supercomputer to work on S6? I mean, it seems like with computers getting better all the time, it would just, you'd just have to wait a few weeks, wouldn't you, for it to spit out the number? Not as far as I'm aware. Um, also, I guess another thing is that for every maths problem like this that us mathematicians find really interesting, there's another problem that might save someone billions of pounds that other people want to work on. And there are so many unsolved math problems 
that we really like. Um, so no, I want S6. <laughs> I want S6. Let's forget about these uh, greatest prime. Let's all work on S6. Uh, let's forget about cures to cancer. And, yeah, 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 exactly. All right. Yeah, I get you. All right. Still, it'd be nice to get S6, wouldn't it? It would be nice to get S6. Uh, it would be very nice to get What's your guess? What's your guess? Well, my guess is that mm. given generally we are multiplying by three ish. That, yeah, that's yeah, four. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would be around 500. Say a number so that when it finally gets published, we can have it on video, what you said. Okay. Mm. Um, I would guess, let's say, so this times three is going to be 483. I'm going to guess 485. Okay. There you go. You heard it here first. There we go. All right. Okay. <laughs> I've got you on the record now. <laughs> I'm sure by now you know the name of our channel sponsor, Jane Street. They're a leading trading firm hiring top people around the world to work on stuff like machine learning, quantitative trading, software engineering. But did you know they've invented a game called Figgy to help people learn about the fast paced world of markets and trading, negotiation? The card version here has been a bit of a hit with Jane Streeters. They even play an annual tournament. But they've also made the game available to everyone. You can even play it online or via an app. Compete in all sorts of modes, including against your friends or fiendish bots. Learn more at figgy.com or search Figgy in the App Store. There's even a nifty tutorial. Players don't need to trade in any order, so feel free to jump in at any time. I'll include links in the description and comments. As quickly as 288 and 5 super factorial is this times 120, which I believe so let's is 34,560. So, so in that sense, it's like factorial. we want to try now and make sure that we don't want three people to know each other.